Australia's concept car, designing for the future. The Australian motor industry is coming of age. As world trade barriers fall, opportunities grow for young Australians to not just build cars, but to create them. In effect, it's the birth of a whole new industry. I think these days there are, there are more opportunities available. Um, you know, Toyota's gearing up and doing, doing uh, more design work, setting up a full-blown design uh, studio here in Australia. Holden and Ford have both got bigger facilities as well, so I think there's a lot more opportunity for young guys to, to get into the car industry today than ever before. But to do what? Commercial reality dictates that any vehicle designed in Australia needs to be a derivative of a chassis already in production. Low cost demands the use of existing components, which are available from stock. So where's the initiative? Where is the ultimate demonstration of the globalisation of Australia's imagination? Have you noticed that she had those old-fashioned containers that come back in? I don't like this picture though. Too much no, reflection. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, it looks uncomfortable. The, yeah, the whole retro, old school stuff. Don't like that. Okay, so the, the, the retro, retro is no. Yeah, we have to be making a statement. These are the car designers of the future. Aged 14 to 18, they've been brought together to conceptualise a vehicle that's never been thought of. Their brief is not to build a car for their parents, but one for themselves. Not only the designers of the future, they're also the next generation of customers. It's to be the first true concept car designed by an Australian manufacturer in more than three decades. It may never go into production as a car, but elements of it will find their way quickly to the showrooms and some of the concepts will seriously challenge the way people have thought about motoring and road safety for more than a century. We didn't look at specific children and their response. What we tried to do was give them the opportunity without any parental or older person leaning over their shoulder, simply say, you guys go for it, you express it the way you want. It may be positive, it may be negative, it may be sarcastic, it may be rude, whatever, you go for it. You comment on what you feel is in your life now that you like, what you don't like. We gave them a number of starters, we, we put together a lot of pictures and images for them to simply start moving and think about what they were doing. And at the end of the day, uh, we got an outstanding result from them, outstanding result. Paul Berenger has been one of the pioneers of Australian automotive styling. Internationally trained but proudly nationalistic, he's worked on projects for global customers and for the local industry. He led the team which designed the Access Australia car, a federal government initiative which showcased Australia's component industry to the world. Working for market leader Toyota, Berenger has assembled a team of young designers. Amongst them, Nick Hogius, winner of the inaugural Wheels magazine Young Auto Designer of the Year Award. Their brief, to interpret the market research from the teenagers and to conceive and build a complete concept car in just 30 weeks. The deadline, the Melbourne Motor Show. You know, these kids are, are wanting something that's a little, little bit different and they don't necessarily want to feel as though they're being told that you have to be in this confined space. Yep. The feeling of speed with, with such a, an open cockpit where you could have some see-through areas down the bottom is really important because then, you know, at 60 k's it feels like you're going 80 k's, for yeah. example. Well, you so see the, yeah, the yeah, white line flashing yeah, past. Yeah. Cool, yeah. Already a clear picture is emerging. The car buyer of tomorrow wants to be in charge. There's firm direction that the driver's seat needs to be a command module separated from the entertainment areas, which make up the passenger compartment. But not too many seats. Defying international trends for one-box multi-seat wagons, these teenagers want individuality in their own car, but also a sense of community in the way their cars can group together. Satellite-linked electronics, termed T-Link for this concept, allow the cars to communicate, find each other's location, meet up and platoon in convoy, and then there's the world breakthrough. Metal number plates, an industry norm for a century, are gone. Replaced by an individual LCD display, triggered by the driver's access card, which is also the driver's license. The person driving the car is now visibly responsible. The use of the vehicle by people is more 
personalised in, in this case. The fact that the driver now, not the owner of the car, takes on a whole level of responsibility well above where we are currently is a very important part of challenging the assumptions, not only within the car company, but within government and within the public in general. The implications for lawmakers and insurers are immense. The access card holds all the driver's data, recognises the driver's competence and adjusts power supply. A novice may only be given half of the available engine power. I'd like to think that it will stimulate conversation, it'll stimulate comment, opinion, it may polarise opinion, but that's important. It's important for Toyota to be able to demonstrate to government and to the public and to our suppliers and to our employees that in fact we're looking towards the future of how the car in public is used. A little picture that we've affected. So you've got bull bar on that. <laughs> there is a mini design contest to style the concept car. With time critical, each of the four designers has just two weeks to pen their own interpretation. As a group, they'll pick the best from each rendition. But there's kudos to be style leader. 29-year-old Nick Hogius was born to design and his supportive family encouraged him. Nick started very early and he draw muscle man cars, things <laughs> like that. And then after he had to go to high school and I said, all right, this is your hobby. What are we gonna do now? This is my job, this is industrial design. When I was younger, I really didn't think that it, you could do a job like this. It really wasn't, you know, um, something I believe existed that someone would actually get paid right. money to do this sort of thing and uh, and it, it's true and it's sort of uh, yes it's probably the best job you could probably ever have I think. The others already recognize Nick as their leader. Part-time rock band member Pete Jones is in charge of interior design. It's critical it harmonizes with the total concept. This sort of game is very simple. It takes a lot of people to put a car together. It's incredibly complex, the number of components and all the bits that have got to be sequenced to come together, um, early stages and late stages throughout the program. And uh, I guess in a way it's sort of similar to, to something like this where you know, I've got all these different parts here that, that come together to make a drum kit sound and then you put that into a band and, and you have a, a more of a complete sound all around there. 25-year-old Anthony Chung will assist Pete on the interior. His specialty is music, and he'll manage the onboard entertainment systems. This project's pretty exciting for me, especially being my first one I've ever done like this. It's, um, it's a huge challenge for me personally, but also, I guess, for everyone, it's a huge challenge. Because of our size of the country, we don't have necessarily many manufacturers able to make concept cars such as this. And because it's, this is pretty much, I guess, one of the first that we've done, it's very exciting being a part of that. Robert Young is a team player. Number two to Nick Hogius on exterior. His own concepts are just as edgy. Nick is our striker. He's the one got to score it. He got the one to make it. He got the one to actually bring the bone score to win. And myself, Peter and Anthony is like the midfield. We are supporting Nick all the way. It's a close run contest. Each of the pencil interpretations has been rendered into a full color impression. The decision okay. goes to the Hogius primary design, which is judged closest to the brief, but is also capable of being really built in the allowable this. time. Yeah, the the yeah, concept almost, car will yes, be a coupe, car, but with exactly. breakthrough features. Great, I guess the example of a, uh, a really well thought out or a bold design or a coherent design is one that you can probably uh, delineate on a drawing with, with a minimum of lines. Um, if the car is confused or somehow um, not working together as a whole, you have to end up drawing the car in a lot of detail to try and understand um, the form of the car. I think that's why this thumbnail was the, was the very first one that caught our eyes. It, um, it was just very bold and it was a, a few of the very bold shapes that kind of, I guess, uh, make it stand out from the crowd. For a second time, the teenagers are brought in it's a moment of enlightenment as they see their ideas interpreted. Oh, that is awesome. Steering wheel gear shift. It's like on the F1 ones. But the integration of the colour would be better on that one because that's just too silver. This is probably my favourite interior. And if they had these floor lights there, it would make that even better. And if they had this touchscreen instead of this 
I get it for anything, it'd be pretty good. It's a sidebar issue, but for the styling team, there's real hope that exposing young minds to this project will create career stream opportunities. Born in the USA, Mike Cavanaugh is a 20-year veteran of America's Motor City. Paul Berenger has scoured the world for his CAD engineers, computer specialists who are capable of interpreting the pure design brief into reality. I'm lucky enough to be in a situation where, where I actually get to, to have a, a quite a bit of input uh, from the engineering point of view. Uh, these guys, uh, the designers, they, they have great ideas, they have uh, a whole lot of uh, enthusiasm and such, but I've got to ground them on occasionally to, to make them understand that we can't make some of the things and can't do some of the things that they want to do in the, the amount of time that we're given to do them. The design team has made a critical decision. Motor industry convention is to build a clay model of a new car, so designers can sculpt it, moulding its proportions. But on this occasion, this thoroughly modern concept vehicle is to be built on the computer without a clay model. But simultaneously, a polystyrene foam buck is to be made. First, a quarter-sized half model, which when placed against a mirror gives an impression of proportion. And then a full-sized version from which accurate measurements can be taken. Seemingly in the blink of an eye, a car has been born. This sort of program would normally you know, be a, a nine to 12 month type of program. And we've got to do the whole lot in six months. So it's uh, really quite a challenge. We've got to take a few shortcuts. Uh, you know, we're using some computer aided design tools to be able to do that. Uh, so we're moving really straight from a CAD model on the screen into a, a foam model, you know, such as you, you've seen in the, the uh, studio here. So that's taking a, a major step out, which is really a clay model, which you normally go through and then use that to prototype uh, parts from that stage. So we're trying to cut corners and speed up the process uh, and using new technology tools, which are part of the mainstream automotive game. And it has a name, Sportivo. Already applied to Toyota's special performance vehicles, it gives the concept car a credible identity. A true concept car is built from unique components. With less than 16 weeks to the Melbourne Motor Show, Australia's automotive supplier industry goes into action. Six spoke aluminium alloy wheels are to be 21 inches in diameter, huge by any standards. They are cast in Adelaide and finished in Melbourne. Not all suppliers are from the motor industry. The boat builders who constructed Scandia winner of the famed Sydney to Hobart yacht race, are hired to mould the carbon fibre body, and it has to fit first time. In Brisbane, a special mould is made to form the glass for the ambitiously shaped side panels. Nothing like this has ever been attempted. At 155 degrees, the acrylic melts like heated honey over the mould. Its intricate form controlled by computer-aided design. At its Altona plant, Toyota Australia has developed a unique modular platform which enables it to build more than one model of a car on one chassis. Concept Sportivo is to use the platform but with a major difference. It's to be all-wheel drive for optimum performance. Unlike many concept cars which are static, this one is for go as well as show. The engine is the Australian-made all-alloy 2.4-litre multi-valve 4 but it's been fitted with a Garrett turbocharger, boosting power to 180 kilowatts. It's been mated to a five-speed gearbox. Surprisingly, the teenagers opted not for radical paddle gears or steer-by-wire technology, but for more conventional solutions. Defying designers' expectations, they say it gives them a feeling of more control. I, I, I like the sort of modern look of most of these cars, but yeah. that's the one aspect that I just it doesn't work. The interior is like no other. Instruments must incorporate technology which has not yet been invented. So there are decisions to be taken on what can be operational and what will be truly conceptual. The problem is that until the body is built, the interior can't be fitted. There is only one car and no interior buck. Nonetheless, electronic suppliers are already past design and into the build phase backing their judgement that their components will work. I'm actually feeling pretty good about it. I, I'm not... 
I, to be truthful, I have been a little concerned about a couple of parts, but uh, through some recent meetings, I've, it's been confirmed that everything's on track there. Uh, it's still going to be tight. These projects always are. You give us another month and we'll find something to squeeze in there. But uh, I'm confident that we're, we're doing well. With seven weeks to go, the body arrives at the Style Australia workshop and the build program goes into top gear. get the body back and fit it onto the framework as, as you see it's uh, gone on uh, remarkably well there's you know, a few areas of conflict which we have to resolve at the moment but to get the body out of the mould uh, and uh, back here without any major dramas was uh, a major milestone in the project which uh, sets us up to complete the project on track. Now the designers are able to use the real car and real dimensions to complete their crucial fit and finish calculations. The massive gullwing style dihedral doors fit first time. The major challenge being how to open and close them sensibly as each weighs 21 kilograms and both are sharply angled to the body. Simultaneously with the arrival of the body, the operation goes to two shifts. The first starts at 6am, the last ends at midnight. But many people are choosing to work beyond. Although they know that teamwork is the only way to on-time completion, a degree of anxiety is now not far from the surface. The wheels, maybe? Like the wheel? Oh, Thanks, it really Small is. Small detail. I, I'm open. I, I really want you guys to come back and really throw some of the, those ideas into the mix here. In the middle of final construction, Nick Hogius is called off to work with Toyota in Japan. It's a big career boost for the young designer and no doubt his work on Sportivo has contributed to his promotion. With just days to go to its Melbourne Motor Show reveal, Toyota's concept Sportivo Coupe came together in a rush. Every component has been trial fitted, then removed, finished, and now in a flurry of activity, finally installed in the car. The result? A concept car near perfection. Installed in a Melbourne studio for a final photo shoot, for the first time, designers could see and explain the results of their work. Pete Jones takes up the story. This is soft robotic form. Um, this is something we got out of the clinic. There was a little picture of some skinny little robots and the kids wrote on there, uh, cuddly. And when we were taking notes about this, Nick and I were talking about this and I said, hey, uh, put down soft robotic. And Nick said, hey, this will be the styling form. So we took it all from that. And you can see that here, you know, we've got these massively exaggerated features like wheels. Uh, the whole thing with the glass here, you know, coming off the front of the car and it just comes up here and then boom, down the side like this. You can get bigger wheels, but man, we're really happy to get 21s. This is great. Huge rubber, big wheels, and it's like a tarantula crawling out of a hole. Um, these inserts in here, you know, this level of detail, this level of dimension is, is what makes this car sink. This is the key to the future. This is your license. Um, embedded in this license is your driver profile. So information about you, your driving history, um, anything in relation to being a road user is in this license. So when you approach the vehicle, the vehicle recognises that you're the person who is authorised to drive the car loads details out of here into the operating system, basically unlocks the car, sets it up for you to drive it. It differentiates if you're a P-plater, okay? We can, we can have the car set up to be different for P-plater. P-platers are less experienced on the road, we sort of need to look after them a bit more. Uh, we also need to do, empower them to have their own driving experience and, and learn and become capable drivers. So if we were to do something like limit the power output of the car, for example, Without taking away from them any of the joy of driving and, and the learning experience, we can help them to become better drivers. You get in the car, the car's actually opened up to, to let you in. You can see the lighting down here on the console as well. Take the card, license, and just pop it in the slot. Straight away on the rear of the car, the license plate comes up. The great thing about that is that while I'm the licensed driver that's authorised in here, I'm responsible for the car and the way it's used, not the owner. So if I illegally parked it, 
the fine comes to me, not to the owner. If I speed, there's no question about who was driving if I'm caught on a camera. What we've done is created a driver-centric environment. We've been very purposeful in doing this. What it is, it's, uh, it's separated from the passenger environment by colour and texture. The driver's seat is even unique to the other seats. We've got a roll bar on the, over the headrest of the seat. It's also fitted with a four-point harness to give you great stability, hold you in the seat, particularly if you're doing some track time, uh, really keep you in place for some stable driving. The car has solar panels through this centre section of the roof here. What it does is it means we can keep a licence plate illuminated without the car running and we get enough energy out of these cells to keep the battery reserves top. We've got a reconfiguring speedo that we've built into the, into the car. This is, uh, it's a quantum leap in, I guess, in technology and driver information. We need some support from the government to be able to get something like this to, to go through into a production vehicle. But the way it works here in its concept state is that if you're driving along, say you're in a 50 zone, 50 will always be at the 12 o'clock position on your speedo. And in fact, 50 will show in the centre of the speedo. When you enter a 100 zone, perhaps you're getting onto a freeway, something like that, the speedo's going to reconfigure and you'll see the whole dial rotate round and the chaplet spread and you get 100 then at the 12 o'clock position. The same thing will happen, the speed advisory in the centre of the speedo will tell you that you're in a 100 zone. If you go over 100, we're not going to say to you, hey, you're going over 100, not like that, but you'll see a red tail on the needle which says that, hey buddy, you are over the limit. We've put uh, things that you need access to right here. We've got oil, coolant, washer levels for the windshield. These are really the only ones that you need to, to get involved with. The last one here is pretty cool though. We've got a USB port. You can plug into this, say you're doing some track time, get in here, calibrate uh, or recalibrate to give yourself a little bit more power, a little bit more torque. This area here is, this is like play, rest, relax, hang out. Um, it's also to enjoy the sort of sportiness of this car as well. With advanced telematics, what we have here as well is the ability for these guys, if they want to do something like they could network game front to rear screen, cock the rear screen off to one side and lock it away from the driver so the driver's not distracted. Uh, one of the great, great things that we've done with this is we've brought something like telematics, GPS and uh, SMS messaging together and we've created a thing called a friend finder. And the way that works is that you have your friend's preference, your friends are logged on like you would in a uh, messenger sort of situation on a computer. And using the telematics, we'll find them for you. The system will find where your friends are at. You can speak to your friends visually. We've got cameras here located in the tops of this computer. And in the front computer, it also has a, a camera built into it. So if you were driving along, driver can't do this quite so well because we don't want them to be distracted but as a passenger uh, the camera is basically directed at you you can get vision back and forth um, on the screen you can see what your mates are doing and you can send the same sort of vision back to them this really is from the information we started with this is sportivo this is camera of the future this is the key to the future it's like a tarantula crawling out of a hole what makes this car sink the Melbourne Motor Show is one of Australia's two big auto expos. In the heart of Australia's Motor City, on one day of the year, the national media gather to examine new models and new concepts. Toyota's Sportivo has been installed overnight. Concealed under a simple blue cloth, it's being touted as the star of the show. More than 50 of the designers, builders and the teenagers who helped in its conception are on hand for the launch. I guess we'll be split into two groups, one half over this side and the other half over that side of the stage, and then we'll have, have a walk on. There's understandable tension, not least because designer Pete Jones has been entrusted with the electronic key and he's running late. I've got no idea. Didn't hear the alarm, didn't go off. The alarm fairies weren't with me. But even as the engineers dive under the cloth to ensure the vehicle is OK, Concerns are turning to anticipation. Ah, oh, yeah, excitement, I think. Yeah, excitement and anticipation for the, the launch and really want to see what the press think of it. <laughs> it's a reveal full of pride. In front of media from throughout Australia and the Southeast Asian region, the design team forms a human shield around the car, then pull back for the unveil. 
devised in Australia by Toyota Style Australia, it is my pleasure to reveal to you the Toyota Sportivo Coupe. Design manager Paul Berenger has just five minutes in this motor show environment to explain the key features of Sportivo, to challenge people to look beyond the car to its unique features. Sportivo Coupe is a statement of style and technology through the eyes of our teenage audience, our future customers and drivers. Young people expect portable and interactive technology in their homes and in the near future, we'll also do that in their cars. It's a proposition that goes down well. Jed Bulmer, editor of Wheels magazine, is one of the first inside Sportivo. It's a terrific showcase for what um, the Australian car industry can do. I think that anyone who's seen this car at the Melbourne Motor Show will be absolutely blown away at the capability that we have here in Australia to do something so advanced. I mean. Uh, motoring journalists like myself, we get to travel all over the world and we see some pretty impressive concept cars throughout the year, but um, this is as good as anything you'll see anywhere. Media reaction is overwhelmingly positive. Even as other stand reveals occur, the electronic media remain with Sportivo. It's the story of the show. Absolutely stunning. I mean, I've seen crowds hang around a stand after the launch before, but nothing like today, frankly. This is an absolute, genuine, realisation that Toyota Australia has come of age in terms of concept vehicle development. The teenagers are justifiably proud. It's the first time they've seen Sportivo since the design concept phase. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Everything we want it to be. Everything. Yeah. Couldn't yep. have asked for more. No. I think the designers really took into account what we had to say and it's evident in the design. I was really surprised about how they came up with everything because I wasn't sure how they were going to be able to do it. And yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I've never had any interest in Toyota, but after this, I reckon they're probably the best now. And past the pride, there's the realization that the features value add to their lives. It's everything we're used to. It's, it's perfect because we, we'd be able to get in there and just work it all straight off because it's so, it's user friendly. Yeah, user friendly. It's so personalised, like you, your friends have sort of input into the system and it just, I don't know, it makes it really familiar. It makes my life a lot easier because everything's pretty much technology and without it we wouldn't really be able to live really well. When the show opens, the crowds tell the story. Crammed around Sportivo, they're young, an audience in hot demand amongst car makers, and they're enthusiastic. Probably like the fact that they considered the views of 14 to 18 year olds, I think it's pretty thoughtful. Um, I like how it's a turbo, it's like four wheel drive, it's like a nice sports car. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's hot. Uh, I guess the styling, the styling, but the technology does account as well. It's fantastic, I think. For Jed Bulmer, it's a phenomenon an opportunity to look into the minds of the next generation of car buyers. I am surprised. I guess I would have expected something perhaps a bit more minimalist, if you like. Um, uh, it, it, I guess the technology shouldn't surprise us. Uh, young, young people are very comfortable with, with computers, with text messaging, with voicemail. Um, so that, that in itself is not such a surprise, but the way that they've, they've, they've desired to see it integrated, the fact that they're totally comfortable with the notion of their identification being displayed as they drive the car, so that they're very comfortable with the notion of responsibility, I guess is one of the big surprises. And for the designers, the buzz is so great, it will take a while to come down. I'm blown away, absolutely static, it's great. Can't believe how well it's gone actually. It looks absolutely fantastic, really, really happy. I'm part of a team that is success, I'm so proud. It's been a most successful project, a big boost to the Australian design industry. And already, the designers are turning their minds to the future. We need to do something clever, something to keep people interested in what Toyota's thinking about. Designing for the future, Toyota.